In our previous session, we introduced the kinetic theory of a gas. We talked about the fact that when gas particles collide with the walls of the container, pressure is imposed on those walls as a result of the force that is imposed on the walls of the container. In today's session, we shall be deriving the expression for this kinetic pressure we are talking about coming up. Now again, take note that as we derive this expression, we have some assumptions we have undertaken. These assumptions are fully explained in our previous session, and like we said, these assumptions fit the description of an ideal gas. Now remember, an ideal gas is only theoretical, but it gives us an approximation of how real gases behave. So let's get started with how we derive this expression. In our derivation for this expression, we are going to assume this box and within this inside this box there is an ideal gas in there inside that ideal gas we are having this particle it's a particle of the ideal gas and let's say it's moving from this side of the wall it's moving from right there it's going to get to this wall let's call that wall x it's going to collide with that wall x and then it will go back to this uh um call, call it that wall so this is moving through a distance l moving back and then it goes back to there now as it is moving we say that as it comes it collides with this wall x that force is it's going to co collide and there's going to be a change in momentum as a result of that change of momentum uh there's going to be a force that is um a force experienced on that wall as a result of that particle moving in that x direction of course, there are so many particles in here, but we are going to first be looking at one particle. Now, since we are looking for expression for kinetic pressure, so definitely we are going to begin by knowing or by saying that pressure is going to be equal to force over area, and that's going to be our primary equation number one. So our job here is to demystify the force, demystify the area, then we get the expression for kinetic pressure. So let's begin with area. Uh, so the area here, these particles moving and coming, let's say the particles moving, they are coming and they are heating, they are colliding with uh, this wall X. Uh, the area of this wall, according to our diagram, this is the length. It's a cuboid with the same, the same length, so L times L, and definitely that is going to be L squared. So the area where these particles are colliding is L times L, so the, pre the area where the pressure is being imposed is L squared. That's our second expression. So we've got the expression for area. So now let's begin on how we do the, get the expression for force. So for us to get the expression for force, we know from Newton's second law of motion that force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. And from, since force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum, we know as this particle is moving, it, is, it moves, it hits that wall and then it comes back. Since we know that velocity is a vector quantity, so if it is in, it's moving in that direction, it's going to be um, positive, positive velocity. When it hits that wall and it gets back, it means on its way back, that is negative, negative velocity. So therefore, the rate of change in momentum is going to be equal to the initial momentum minus so the initial momentum in this case, which is mass of that particle, multiply that by velocity in the x direction, that is moving in that direction, minus the final momentum. The final momentum so happens to be the mass of that same particle, multiply that by ux. Now this negative is coming from the fact that this uh, velocity is negative since this thing reverses. So that's how this minus negative becomes like that. And of course, this becomes a plus. And we end up with uh, the, f the, the force being 2mux divided that by t. The rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force. So we are going to break this down further, the force. So this is the time uh, taken. The, this time here is the take time taken by that particle to move from that wall to go that way and begin. And if you look at this amount of time, uh, we know that distance is going to be equal to speed 
times time. So if we make t the subject of the formula here, the time there is going to be equal to the distance moved by that particle to move from here to go and then come back. So the, the mean, meaning it means that the distance in this case, it's going to be 2L because it moved this distance of L twice. It moved from this wall, it collided and went back. So it's going to be 2L, divide that by uh, the speed. Of course, it's moving at a speed of UX or you it's the velocity in the x direction so in the place of t we substitute the place of t with that 2l over ux so in the place of time we put 2l over ux and that is what we've done in our next step it's going to become 2 times mass of the particle times this velocity in the x direction divide that by 2l over ux which is right there and definitely we when we divide that it becomes this expression 2 times m times ux times this ux it comes up divide that by 2l uh, now if you look at this mass this is mass of the particle we, we break this down further the mass of the particle we know that density which we denoted by rho density is equal to mass over volume so here we are having mass so making this m the subject of the formula mass is equal to density times volume and since mass is density times volume, so in our next step from here, this is what we do right here. It is going to become 2, multiply that by the mass. The mass is density times volume times ux times ux, divide that by 2L. And that is how our next expression comes to. So we shall go ahead and demystify or break down our volume again. Breaking down volume, we know that volume is length times length times length according to our diagram our diagram is a cuboid and the lengths are all the same the length the width the height is a came it's a regular cuboid so the volume of this thing is length times length times length which so happens to be l cubed so we go ahead and substitute that in this value v so the the it, this in the place of v we put there l cubed so this becomes two which is uh, two times, which was the, that was there previously, times the density which or of the gas, multiply that by volume, now volume has become L cubed, multiply that by ux by ux, divide that by 2L, of course this is supposed to be ux squared. So this expression all becomes, we go, this two cancels with that two, this L cancels with one of those, and you remain with two of them, and this ux times ux, this velocity in the x direction becomes ux squared. So, of course, this comes to that. This we have the density multiply that by L squared, multiply that by UX squared. This, which is definitely this. And definitely, so our value expression for force has, bought, has reduced to this, that the density times L squared times that. This is our equation 3. So, if we may go back to our first equation. In our very first equation, we said that we are looking for expression for kinetic pressure. So if we're looking for expression for kinetic pressure, pressure is going to be equal to force over area. We've got the expression for area as L squared, which is was our second equation. And we, we set out to find the expression for force, which we have got here finally as this expression. So now that we have this, we are going to go ahead and substitute the this third equation. We substitute this expression for F right there and ex substitute for the expression for a right there so this becomes like this so our expression for kinetic pressure which is force over area our expression for force is what we got earlier that is in our expression 3 and definitely our expression for area is right there uh, L squared so of course when you look at this this L squared goes with that we remain with density times u in the x direction or velocity in the x direction squared and that's our kinetic pressure right there and that gives us our fourth expression now this is the expression for kinetic pressure but this velocity right here is only happening in the x direction and when you look at this we are looking at particles that are moving randomly in so many directions if you look at this box you have this is just one particle that but there are several particles here and these particles are moving in a random motion some are moving in the x direction some are moving in the y direction some are moving in the x in the z direction if this is the x that is the y direction then some are moving in the z direction they are constantly moving very fast and because they are microscopic 
at any one point any particle is capable of moving in either the x or y or z direction so we shall set out to find the mean square speed of these particles in all directions it means that we need to find the resultant velocity of each and every particle so to go ahead and find the resultant velocity of each and every particle we shall do so by trying by employing what we call the Pythagoras theorem so for this case we are having a particle it is it this particle can either move in the x direction with that velocity ux or it can move in the y direction with velocity uy or it can move in the z direction with velocity uz so to find the resultant velocity which resultant velocity we are going to denote by c using Pythagoras theorem that uh, our resultant velocity c squared is going to be equal to u the velocity in the x direction squared plus velocity in the y direction squared plus velocity in the z direction squared that is our resultant velocity expression but since these particles are too many and they are moving randomly we are we shall assume that the the same speed this particle will move in the x direction will be the same speed it will move in the y direction it will be in the same speed it will move in the z direction so this regardless of the direction they'll move the directions they move whether in the x y or z directions the speed with which they'll move in those various directions will always be the same since ux the velocity in the x direction is the same as velocity in the y direction and it is and it's the same as the velocity in the z direction it means that our resultant uh, velocity which is c squared can still be expressed as ux squared plus ux squared since this is the same as that plus ux squared since uz is the same as ux and definitely this expression gives us that c squared is going to be equal to 3 ux squared and when we make ux the subject of the formula right here this ux squared the subject of the formula this becomes a third c squared is going to be ux squared so uh, this expression you notice that this ux squared it is what is in our fourth expression this one right here so where there is ux squared is what we, we substitute this the, this expression this fifth expression in the fourth one our fourth expression is that one right there we substitute it right there and when we substitute uh, this expression there we end up with alpha, uh, the, the density which is right there times where in the place of ux squared we put a third c squared which is that right there a third c squared and uh, this becomes pressure is going to be a third times density times the velocity squared and this right here is our expression for the kinetic pressure exerted on the walls in a container that is containing an ideal gas This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.